Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot sniffing out the Mad Cheese as always. Got another full breakdown video for you. Last weekend, I put out the full Saints uh, on, on Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to do something very similar this weekend. Today will be uh, mostly the larger formations, the run-stopping formations. If you want to see part two tomorrow on Sunday, uh, more of the pass-heavy formations, the blitzes, the, you know, the formations you want to use to stop pass plays, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section and I'll put that out tomorrow. Other than that, let's go ahead and let's get right into the video. So first up out of the 3-4 odd, we have the cover two man. Now this play, cover two man is pretty good, um, you know, coverage. You really have to mix man and zone in pretty much everything that you've run this year. Um, I can't I can't say that anytime you just run a straight, straight zone, zone, you're not going to get beat. You really have to run something that has both. So I find, like I said, you can use it like this. You probably won't give up too many one-play touchdowns. There's not a lot of one-play touchdowns against cover two man. But I find that if you want to maximize it, I would zone all, which is um, the, the D-pad to the right and then up on the right stick. And then I would also put these outside guys into some sort of outside coverage, whether that's a... Um, you know, like I said, I can if you just if you hit the D-pad to the right twice, it'll bring up your guys your your guys icons, and then you can select them. And if you hit D-pad, I'm sorry, if you hit the um, the left stick to the right, you'll put them on curl flats. You have to do it twice for both of them. You can't put them both at the same time. But I find like this is a really good setup right here. I don't typically feel like I need a second defender in 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 the box with me here either. So if I want to, I could always man him to that receiver by uh, just hitting up on the right stick and then hitting Y. Uh, but that's really up to you. I mean, you could leave him in a hook curl if you want to. But essentially, this is a defense that I find will do better in, in certain distances. I mean, it, for one thing, your opponent will never really know what they're looking at because the defense is so, you know, there's it's obvious. I mean, the man coverages are really tight. You can see right there. I'll go to the replay. You can see how, how tight, um, you know, this... Um, the, the outside man coverages that's part of the reason that I that I that I have this coverage I have two man receivers the outside guys which typically work close to the boundary you can see they're just they're just airtight a comeback route like I said comeback routes typically beat that typically beat man you can see when he when he makes that break and comes back he beats it but look what underneath look what happens underneath you know what I mean he's you've got this guy right here this guy crossing he's covered you know what I'm saying then when he covers comes all the way across he's got this guy's zone coming into so it's like everybody's essentially double covered which is a, which is pretty much the idea you'll give up some flats but like I said this situation this is a situational defense you're going to use this in like a third and like 10 or more third and 15 if he were to catch that right here he's three yards past the line of scrimmage these guys are all going to converge he might get five yards total so like I said defense is all about you know down and distance and then obviously Wentz, for whatever reason, goes up top. And then me and, you know, this guy are verging. So, like I said, you have a couple of different, you know, this is a really good defense to me, like I said. But situational based, no play in this game, you can run the entire length of the game. So, to recap one time, like I said, you can run it as is, you know, pinching and spreading and whatnot. You know, I, I like to, you know, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm worried about an inside zone, like on a play like this, I could pinch the D-line and spread the linebackers. But that's just t typical defensive etiquette. But either way, like I said, you can run it like this, or you can run it with all the zones, which, like I, you know, like I said, that's, that's D-pad right, up on the right stick, and then zone all. So like I said, let's, I, I'm not even really doing this part right. So like I said, this is it right here. This is, the, this is the look. You have those outside guys. Typically, the outside guys are the ones that you can't defend. That's why it's best to double them. I can defend this slot receiver. I can defend this tight end, you know what I mean? Because they're inside the numbers. That's my area as a user. So it's better for me if I have the outside guys manned up, which is perfect, like a, like a defense like this. So let's go ahead and let's run this one more time. Like I said, I'm covering that slot guy. You know what I'm saying? There we go. He got four yards, three yards. <laughs> oh, and then I didn't tackle him. I don't care. You can have that all game. You know what I'm saying? This this is the cut down on big plays, and it'll do that perfectly. So then let's watch the replay one more time. Like I said, the, the guys that you have to worry about are the guys that are outside the numbers. You can't control those. I'm taking away these two guys. The running back here, and then you got the dude in the center. He's also getting doubled by this guy right here. So there's nothing there. You know what I mean? You can have this flat route. I'm not worried about that. And then obviously this guy's getting doubled by the safety in the corner. You know what I mean? Like you have that all locked up. And then the outside guy, he's probably on an island with himself. 
until the ball's thrown, and then he completely breaks off. But you can see, I mean, he's got that manned up. He, he goes stride for stride with that the whole way. So the entire defense, once again, double covered with no issue of getting beat deep. That's the important part of this play. There's nothing to do, you can do to beat this deep. So no more one place. And like I said, just running it regular is not that great, but it's decent. So but like I said, your opponent's going to see cover two. When they come back to the line of scrimmage to call their plays, they're going to see that you're in cover two man, and they'll try to make a play for that. But that's not what it's going to be by the time they hike the ball. So they'll never be able to create a play based off of the defense you're running because they'll never have any idea what defense it is. So to me, a really good play. Next up out of the 3-4 odd, we have the cover one hole. Very similar setup. All I'm going to do is um, put all these guys on. Uh, I'm going to zone all. Then I'm going to put these outside guys on curl flats. And essentially, this is you know you you have you have an, the issue the same issues that cover one uh, man plays have, which is like curl routes. And uh, I'm sorry, not curl routes. Um, you know, you have your your. Um, so look at that! Boom! Look at that. <laughs> like what's what's the the wheel routes? Like the wheel routes. We're going to give this play problems like any cover one man, but you can see like, I mean, you know, you have, nothing's really open. Like I watched the replay there. You can see we went to the house on the very first play. Let's go and let's watch the replay. Your certain things beat man, like wheel routes. Somebody comes out in a gun bunch and hits you with a wheel route, still going to beat it, whether you're in this defense or not. Bench switches, not so much. Uh, slant coverages, they're not going to beat this the same way. Uh, but let's, cause let's look at these guys right here. He's doubled coming across. The deep guy's doubled, and then obviously the safety's there. So if he throws it there, he's going to get whacked by the safety. And then obviously underneath, for whatever reason, he chose to throw it to the flat, which is never a good idea in a man coverage. And then we just jump that and pick that off. But even he's double covered. There's a guy above him. So like I said, this type of defense, I mean, at this point, I probably would have hit R3, clicked R3 to send one of these extra defenders. Uh, but, you know, that's about it. So, you know, very similar setup. To, um, to some other plays. Uh, you just want to have, make sure you have, like here, this looks like it could be a run play, so I just want to set up my outside guys to try to limit that motion Van Noy out there as much as I can. That'll help him get to his zone as well. I mean, you can motion these guys out, help them get to their zone areas as much as you can. So let's go ahead and let's do this again. Like I said, there, it's not a zone. Like I said, right there, I mean, I motioned him out too much and I gave him the inside on a slant, so you got to be careful with that. But, you know, I was just kind of showing the defense anyway. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say to do that. Like, like right here I would, though, because I don't want to give up. If it is an outside run, that's the only scenario where I'd say, yeah, let me motion that guy out as wide as I can because I don't want to give that up. But this will lock down pretty much anywhere. Look at that. Picked off, and it was picked off. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like I said, turnovers, 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 turnovers you're going to get with this defense. Let's watch the replay again once Madden's done with this goofy crap. Let's take a look at what happened there. Like I said, Wentz is just chucking in the coverage because there's nothing open. So like I said, one more time. He's getting jammed coming off. I guess he tried to throw over the top, but there's people all around. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing there. So like I said, another really good defense. Less capable, less 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 of a chance of giving up over the top stuff. Next up out of the 3-4 odd, we have the pinch dog to press. So this player right here, all I'm gonna do is base the line and show blitz. It'll bring all my coverage in. Then I'm going to blitz all. Then I have the option to, uh, you know, I want to go over the top. And then I'm going to pick, you know, one of these guys, motion them in, and I'm going to use her that. So this is going to be who I drop back and cover the middle with. Now, when the play hikes, I will have a little bit of an issue getting off the coverage. You can see, I mean, obviously you're running into a blitz like that. Uh, but I have, I mean, there, no outside runs are going to come up against this, by the way. You can't really run outside on uh, cover two. So I'll go ahead and I'll show the replay. Um, because the cornerbacks are so close and they're playing down to the line, they're essentially just going to boom right in. So any outside runs, they're going to handle that, these outside corners. So you have to worry about that. But essentially, you know, the, the, for a pass defense, like I said, I'm, I'm just going to put this guy, I don't have to bluff blitz him. I think if I bluff blitz him, it might actually be an issue for the blitz um, as we're getting another run play. Like I said, right there, you're not going to get much. You know what I mean? That guy's going to be right there handling that. You can motion him in if you want. You could bring him in a little bit, but like I said, if I want to cover, like right here, I got a slot receiver. If I want to cover him, I can just bring this guy out and try to take away that. So like I said, that's going to get, oh, and then we have a, <laughs> so that we, you know, like I said, they're throwing, they're going to have to throw fast because they're going to get a free, a free defender off the opposite edge. Let's see if we actually did on that play. So like right there, they actually locked it up because it was a, you know, they set me free, so I could have went in. So here we go once again, baseline show blitz, send all. 
I don't know what's going on because they're not reacting. So base aligns, show blitz. There we go. Get your ass in there, Bentley. So there's the look. Like I said, bunch got a bunch receiver right here. So I'm going to move this guy in. That's going to get my other guy opposite the field in right away. He, he got in. He got picked up by the running back. But you can see the quarterback had to get rid of it. Nothing was really open anyway. Checks it down to Ertz in the flat. So like I said, I mean, for whatever reason, he just got kind of, <laughs> I don't know. He came in kind of slow. So I probably can uh, adjust that. But like I said, we have, you know, I'm, I'm basically covering the bunch. He has to get rid of it. And uh, I'm all over it when it gets when the, when the pass gets thrown. Next up, we got the cover four drop show too. You don't really need any adjustments on this play. You can pinch and I'm sorry, you can base a line and um, you know show blitz. And you know these safeties play the run really well. They'll 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 step down into the box and play the run. And if you do this, it looks a lot like some of the other blitzes that are in this formation. Um, you can actually send a blitz. I'm just gonna run it like this one time. You can send a blitz out of this formation as well. But you can see there's just not really a lot open. And by the time, you know, there's just nothing really open here. It's a really good coverage play. But you can send blitz if you don't want to wait. You know what I'm saying? You want to get a little bit aggressive. You can send the house and then use the same, you know, principles uh, of the, of a man of some of the other blitzes where you just bring one of these guys over and use them. And you'll get really good heat. Um, but you can see, I mean, you know, there's, he's just got to get rid of it. You're going to get pressure. I don't even know if he caught it. It looks like the ball might have came out there. But, uh, no, he's got it. But, uh, but that's another option entirely if you want to, you know, get aggressive and then just send. You could also, you know, keep it contained to get that guy around the edge. If you just want to send a little bit a little bit more pressure than you typically would. And then, like I said, you just got to cover the short routes because obviously they're not going to have much time for deeper routes to develop. So right there, I was all over that coverage. But obviously, you know, I just didn't do a very good job using it. But I actually, I just took a bad angle. Like I, I was, I got caught up by this, um, by this running back. I got hit by him. And then he just messed up the route. But otherwise, I mean, I know the ball's got to go to one of these short routes. So if you're sending house blitzes like that, you know, you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get a look like that. We have to cover underneath. And then when the play is over, they'll go back to the to the defense and they'll see cover four, not thinking that they're gonna see. You know, if you're running this a lot with whether you're blitzing or whether you're running it like normal, they're gonna see a cover four post snap rather than, you know, all this extra. And then, like I said, you get good pressure. If you have a good defensive end, you have good, good pressure regardless. A lot of it coming off of doing this this press and this um, this show blitz and this baseline. A lot of times you'll you'll get a good a good pressure play just from base aligning and, uh, and pressing for whatever reason. So we can watch the replay and see what happened there. But uh, it's got, you know, the, the offensive line is going to read all these extra guys. Like right there, you just kind of let off. You know what I mean? Like you can see like the... The, D, the offensive linemen really don't block anybody. Like 71 right here, he thinks it's going to be that guy right in front of him. 62 as well. Like this guy right here, 62. Um, you know, they, if I can get to 62, the center, the guard, whatever. Yeah, this guy right here, he comes out. Well, 62 comes out, rather. 62 comes out, shoots across. Jesus Christ, this is fucking weird. He shoots across and picks up a guy that's dropping in the coverage. So these two guys, two guys block nobody. And then this, um, you know, he gets around even a play action. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the fake play action. He gets around all of them and just makes a really big play. So let's go ahead and let's do that one more time. So these guys right here. Like I said, it's just a great coverage play, obviously. And then we're getting sacks once again. We're not really, we're only sending three guys. So let's go ahead and let's show the replay here. See what the issue was. Like I said, once again, these guys... You know, they come off these, these, uh, these, oh God, please just let me just thank you. These guys come off and block guys that are going back into coverage. And then, you know, essentially just get a one-on-one -on -one and then he gets, you know, just because of the angle, he just drives this guy all the way back. So like I said, it's not like he's coming in unblocked every time, but you can see how you're getting, um, you know, some really good, it's a weird animation the whole way, but you can see how you're going to get pressure based off of just saying three guys and coverage making the quarterback keep it. I mean, they could throw it, but there's just nobody open. So he could throw it into the, in the coverage and get picked, or he can hold it and get a sack. Next up, we got the pinch buck zero. So same setup. I mean, you should know this play. Everybody's running online. Uh, you know, base align and uh, show blitz. And that's pretty much all you got to do. You can use this guy in the middle, or you can put him on a, on a uh, you know, you can, you can block, you can send him in on the blitz. And then I can motion over Van Noy here. And that'll give me, I can cover the running back, which will be that same assignment, but it'll essentially just get a guy free off the edge. Now, sometimes it lets you in free, which is not what you want, as you can see right there. I mean, the coverage, you know, obviously they're going with a post shot. That was like a, they were like blocking eight men there. 
but um, you have the option of either using that or you can just bring this guy over and user him like now I can cover the tight end and like I said I should get um, you know a free guy off although I got chop blocked so there we go I mean that was just a weird play but you know you can see the pressure for something from from uh, from from Wentz so here we go one more time like I said I'll just do this and then I'll, I'll use her I'll use her 86 and like I said we get a run play it's obviously gonna stop a lot of run plays it's really good run defense it's a little vulnerable running outside but that's about it so like I said right here we'll go ahead and we'll just use this guy in the middle so as long as I don't get chop blocked I said right there I mean I could have oof, it's lucky I didn't jump all over that but I'm sure we had a free guy running in which is why that happens so let's watch the replay Typically, they're not just going to throw that. So, yeah, I guess he, he picked up on it. So, I mean, it's a good blitz, but if they're blocking enough people, a lot of times it won't get home. Um, but either way, I mean, it, like I said, it is a good blitz. The other way to run this play is to, um, you know, to basically, if they're going to run, I mean, if they're going to run it in a shotgun like this, I guess I'll go ahead and I'll show another variation. But typically, this guy's going to be back over here. If they're going to run a shotgun, I'm definitely going to run it the way that I was showing you. So we're going to do the same thing. Ba base line. I mean, this is just getting funky now. Get your ass back to Roberts. But either way, like I said, I'll bring I'll bring Kyle Van Noy in against a shotgun. I'll definitely do this because there's no running back in the backfield. Um, but, but then I'll go ahead and I'll show a different a different way. So like I said, right there, we're all over that. I'm sure the pressure was getting home. So either way, like I said, the next way is uh, go ahead and just put them all on a zone all. Then I'm going to put these outside guys in the flat routes, and that's pretty much going to be uh, be the look here. So this is the play. Pretty much everybody's going to get double covered all around the field. Uh, with the exception of deep routes, it can get beat deep. Um, but like I said, if anybody's throwing anything like that, I mean, it's just, I guess they let the, the, that guy go. The only option with that, you have the choice. Like I said, here we have another another um, you know empty backfield. But you have a choice of putting these guys in the hard flats or putting them into cloud flats. And that's really based off the down and distance. You know, I mean, if, you, if you're going to, if they need third and two, then you're probably going to want to put them on the hard flats. If they need third and, you know, 12, you're going to want to put them on cloud flats. So it's that simple. Like I said, everybody here is pretty much going to get doubled. And, you know, you'll, you'll be you know, coverage. You know, you just get good coverage. And it's really that's really a situational defense as well. I would use this as like a base defense. It's just like the previous, you know, some of the other plays. You essentially, um, you know, your, your opponent's going to see something that, that they're not seeing. Once they get after the play, they look at the post-play diagram. They're gonna say, well, it says they're hitting me with a with a pinch buck. Oh, but it's really not. I mean, it's, it couldn't be anything further from that. And like I said, you'll only really give up like small, you know, plays here and there, like right there. I mean, that was just my my guy. I just totally blew that. And then you have, I think I might have blitzed one too, or picked up one too many guys. So yeah, you have a blitz, and then you have a base defense out of this if they start hitting you with. Um, you know, start hitting you with slants or something like that because that's what a lot of people do with that with that man coverage, that man blitz. You just hit him with this, and there's nothing really open. I mean, he has to take the check down pretty much every time. Let's watch the replay, see how, how the coverage was. Like I said, right here, I mean, pretty much, you know, everybody's pretty much double covered. That's the point. This guy's double covered outside. Tight end's double covered up the seam, which was by me. This guy here, he's waiting for this guy to cross. He's double covered. You got a single coverage up top. Now this is important because, like I said, this play, you can get in trouble over the top if you don't have a good enough man safety. Now obviously, even if he did throw it, you know, I mean, he probably would have got caught. But that's about the only thing, which brings me to my next defense, which is why I created the cover two man defense. Next up out of the four three under, we have. Next up out of the four three under, we have the free fire. This play right here, I mean, there's no really adjustments needed. You're pretty much just betting that they're uh, not blocking the running back. Um, you can essentially just run it just like this. I'd say use it in the middle with the safety, and you're just sending some heat over the over the center there. As you can see, we're just going to get you know, like a guy. A guy was coming free, and he has to get it out pretty quick. Man blitz is pretty much all you can do to get pressure in this game. Um, as you can see, let's go to the replay real quick. Like I said, there was a guy coming right up the middle here. And he, he took the angle. I mean, he would have got past this guy and, and would have been in Wentz's ear. Um, so, like I said, that's the best way to get heat in this game. So, like I said, no real adjustments needed. Uh, really good against the run play, obviously. As you can see, just gets right through. Uh, lanes are created, but they're typically filled at the same time. And like I said, you don't have to do any adjustments. You don't have to give away what you're doing. You know, your opponent's just going to, 
you know, uh, you can't run this too many times. And we want your opponent to see that you're running the same man blitz over and over again. But you can see, like I said, really good run stopper, really good blitz, uh, really good, good pressure. You don't have to really do anything. Like I said, this this play really stops to run on its own. You just have to uh, use her well on the backside. Next up, we got the weak corner blitz. This play right here, all I want to do is base align, show blitz, and then base align again. And what that does is it just it just brings the corner back into a good spot. I'm gonna use her right here. It got me in a perfect spot. I'm gonna use her right here just to try to try to got oh we have a <laughs> now we have one of these. But like basically it's gonna bring that corner back in for a good delayed blitz. So base align, show blitz, base align again. Like I said, I mean I want this guy, I don't think I got that base align properly. Like I said he typically comes in a little bit more. But I guess since that receiver is so far out, that's why it's base lining out. But either way, like I said, I, and then I could also put him on a QB contain um, just to kind of to pull coverage. Like I said, to pull those those linemen in a little bit more. So let's go ahead and let's run this one time. So it's really just a blitz. I mean, it's not necessarily. You see, the guy he comes in late, but he comes in free pretty much every time as we get a five yard loss on that play. It's not the fastest blitz. It's just the most consistent. Because that cornerback's going to come around. Like I said, that tackle's taken up. Number 62 in the middle is not blocking anybody, which is perfect because I'm sending five. But if he was in a little bit closer, he might have got in a little bit faster. But obviously, he's coming from a far distance. Like I said, to me, I would just base a line twice. And then you can see how it brings that cornerback down. Um, like I said, I, you can try to bring him in a little bit. But if you bring him in too much, your opponent's going to see that the, it's a corner blitz. And the linemen might pick up on them quicker than they're supposed to. So like I said, don't get too crazy with that. But you can cheat them in a little bit. Kind of looks like he's stealing a base in baseball. And then we just keep getting screen plays, but it's whatever. You can see that that's, you know. Well, I'm glad I didn't bother. So, base line twice. I mean, even just once, it doesn't matter. If you, you just want to make sure that cornerback's down where he's supposed to be. And hopefully we'll get a, get a good pass play here. So that's just, I said, that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, the guy came in free. I mean, I know the, I know the running back came out. But, like I said, you're going to just see, it's going to be a consistent blitz where you don't have to send too many people. Like I said, it's not going to be lightning fast. By the time, you know, like I said, he's coming around free every time. It's just not going to be, you know, this is not a nano. <laughs> it's just a good play. Next up, we got the Crash Blitz 3. So all I'm going to do, base a line, base a line again, base a line and press. That's all I'm going to do. Like I said, you can see he's out there now. Bring this guy down. User this gap. That's it. So just base a line and press. That's it. Like I said, we got to run play. Cornerback comes over. Can't even, <laughs> can't even finish him. But you can see, I mean, it's, you know, do that again. Base a line press. Like I said, he's in. I don't want him out that far. I said, I'll bring him in a little better than that, but you might not always have time to do that. So here we go, one more time. Like I said, we just got, I mean, he's obviously going to keep shutting down those run plays because he's going to come in unblocked. So here we go again. And they're getting out a quick throw right there. If you really want to kick it up a notch, you can go ahead, you can shift your line left and get them to, you know, before you do your, um, before you do your pinch or your uh, base line and your press, and that'll just help to get, um, help to get those guys out there as well. And then you can also put them on a QB contain and we're just not getting any run plays or we're just not getting any pass plays. So they really ran away from that on that play. So, like I said, you can also you can also spread them before you or, or shift them to that side before you base line and uh, and press, and then just bring this guy over here, and then they're just they're running away from it, but it doesn't even matter. I mean, it's still a good run defense. So, spread left, base line, press, and then my cornerback's all the way back there. Get your ass down on space. All right, there we go. So there we go. Like I said, I'm just gonna hold this guy here, and he almost ran right into it. So, I mean, the coverage was good, so we get a sack, but yeah, that was, you know, unique play. He actually almost rolled into it, and that's probably why the blocking picked it up quicker. 
You can see right there. I mean, if he, if he didn't roll into it, he probably wouldn't have had a problem. But uh, they were also blocking. They only had three guys on the route, so that means that uh, that they had eight blocking. So one more time. Baseline press. Bring this guy down to the gap. So maybe we can get a get a hit. Bam! <laughs> Knock that ball out. Like I said, good coverage. The guy was coming around. Like I said, these delayed cornerback outside blitzes aren't going to be lightning fast, but they're going to be consistent. You see he's coming around. Definitely made Carson move out of the pocket. Next up, we got the snake three deep. So, like I said, all we're going to do here is spread, put the uh, put him in a QB contain. And then I'm just going to go ahead and bring this guy over here to try to draw as much space for the safety as I can. Like I said, you can see right there. I mean, the, the pressure's, you know, they didn't get hit to get rid of it right away. They didn't get much. Next up, we got the FS Fire 3. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch the D-line. Chung here, I just want to get him outside just a little bit. I mean, he typically, well, I want to get him a little bit closer to the line than that. And then I'm just going to bring my user over here. Now, typically in a five-wide set, this is not the best look because i got a user that tight end. And then he's got to come across. Like, I mean, he still took the drag. I was, I was as good a coverage as you're going to get on that. This play really is, um, you know, best for like a... It's really good run stopping defense doesn't quite get the um, the pressure it has in previous Maddens like I said right here we're just gonna put them on a QB contain as well and that's just like they're just whew, quick throws man they really get nothing off there let's see how much of that had to do with uh, pressure but yeah you, just, you essentially got I mean right there I mean that's just I don't know if that 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 uh, tight end was coming to pick me up or what but you could see, I mean, that he he was he gets a free release, and like I said, it's hard to tell with the, with the with the play design if that would have happened otherwise. So like I said, we got we're just gonna pinch. So this guy right here, for whatever reason, runs back. And like I said, I just gotta use her, you know, whatever gap I can. Doesn't really matter. Because like I said, you're not getting lightning fast pressure off the edge. And I almost picked that off. Come on, bro. So I, I I tried to I stayed at the line too long. Like I said, we just gotta, you know. So we're getting pressure. I mean they're not getting much. It's a good base defense. They're not getting much. Pretty much just taking quick throws the entire time. So you can see he comes around here free. And we get a free run of the quarterback, which is essentially what we're trying to do. So worked out. So here we go. One more time. We're just gonna pinch. QB contain, bring this guy out. You could always blitz this other linebacker too. Like if it's just a tight end like that, I can I could do that. I can handle that. Let's go ahead and let's do this. We get a run. And he really didn't have much. So like I said, it's just a good, good base defense. You can get some pressure. You get some pressure from time to time. Like I said, let's get this guy down. I don't want him taking the time to go back just because I because I print or uh, just because I I pinched the line. He has to run off. There we go. One more time. Got the got the baseline. Oh, and then we're just gonna get a get a screen, which I'll just be all over that. So you know they're just taking short stuff. So one more time. Like I said, I'm doing this with the extra extra blitzer. So I just got to cover all these guys and the, all these tight ends here. And there we get instant heat. So a little extra. Watch the replay. Like I said, they had blocked. This guy just got He just got around. Like they didn't even, like I said, me. It really, it was me drawing. You know, that's why I do that a lot. I just try to draw guys away. Like right there, I'll just drop down. And go in a little, a little swooping pattern just to try to draw a lineman to get a guy free. And you can see how that works. So really a lot of that has to do with what I'm doing. So we say one more time. We'll pinch that. 
And like I said, a lot of the a lot of the success of this play really has to do with what I do once the play starts. That's why a lot of times I'll just make like a swerving motion before I go into coverage just to get a free guy. So that's really a good way to get that offline like that. So go ahead and watch that one more time. Like I said, it's really about what I do. I just run across these linemen just to kind of get in the mirror of me and then boom, this guy's coming in free. So just make that swoop. Make that swoop with that lineman, or with that with that tackle, just to try to mess up these guys' AI, and then you get a free rusher. So one more time, pinch the line, bring Chung down. Like I said, bring this dude in the gap, and I'm gonna make that make that make that sprint across the line, sprint across the line, and boom, we get a free runner. It took him a while because he got, couldn't quite get around. I'm not sure if I did the base line on that or not. I might have forgot to do that. Still not giving up much, and then like I said, you can see the guy, he comes in free, but I think I forgot to keep you contained. It just takes too long getting around. And then we got another guy coming in free right in his face. But like I said, that's all because of my little swoop right there. Like I said, you can see right here, like, like I'm swooping around. See, 79's blocked, but when I swoop around, he gives him up, and then now he's free. Like I said, we just got to get down in this gap here. We'll wait for that safety to come back down. We're going to do that swoop. Swoop across the line. And we got a free runner. And he's just chucking it away. So like I said, that's all you really got to do is just sprint across that line. We're going to watch the replay. Like I said, safety's coming in a little late. I sprint across that line. Nobody ever picks him up. Although that time the safety just came in by himself. It didn't really seem to appear what I was doing. But nobody came off for him. But still best practice. Still best practice to work that out. So here we go. We'll bring him down manually. So I'm just going to come right here. Sprint across that line. And we get a, we get a run. Oh, he's just all over that. So like I said, really good base defense. Next up we got the corner blitz three. So this guy right here, I just want him in closer. That's really it. You know, I'm just saying, I'm just going to, I don't care. I mean, I want to move this guy out too because he's going to be covering that area. Then I can pinch the D-line and just bring my cornerback. Or I bring my uh, my second, whoever's covering the middle right here. This is pretty much it. Like I said, I can hover this spot, sprint around it a little bit, get that cornerback right off the edge, and then I wasn't really covering. I wasn't paying attention because I was watching the cornerback fly in. <laughs> Let's watch the replay. Like I said, this is really all about what I do at the line. So like I said right here, I just kind of stay home waiting for, you know, I'm going to cut off the angles, but you can see I just kind of meander around. And then, you know, I go for the tight end, which was a mistake. I should have went for the for a state in my zone, and I would have had this guy coming across the middle easy. But like I said, I was pretty much preoccupied with watching the cornerback come straight in like he did. So that's the play, really. You're just trying to get heat. You're trying to get heat without giving up anything. So like I said, one time, pinch the D-line. That's all you're really doing. Got to manually bring this cornerback in and bring this safety out because you don't want to give that up right off the bat. So here we go one more time. Like I said, I just got to kind of hover around the line for a second before I drop it in my zone. Like I said, I just, I just want to read movement. And then boom, I'm getting that pocket pick. <laughs> so I'm sure that the, uh, oh man, he's going to catch me for real? Really, bro? I guess it, I guess Lane Johnson's pretty fast. But you can see, I mean, you can get back into coverage pretty quickly. And they're going to have to take short routes. So you could easily switch to like a hard flat too. Like I said right here. You can see he's coming off free. They actually, this lineman actually switches off on him. So like I said, I actually brought him in a little bit too much. But the way he switches off on him, he gives the in guys. <laughs> he switches off in the corner and gets the inside guy a free release. So one of those guys is going to get in pretty quickly. Next up out of the nickel 245, we got the buck slant 3. We're going to shift the defense to the left. Then we're going to shift our linebackers to the right. And then we're going to put a QB contain up. So that's going to be the look. And then I'm also just going to bring this guy down. Since I'm using the middle, I'll bring him down just to try to pull some linemen. And we get um, get another one of these. You know, they don't want to run normal plays on me. So let's go ahead and let's do that again. Shift the defense left. Shift the uh, linebackers to the right. And then QB contain. And then bring this guy down. This is going to be the play right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to so we get that guy off the play action, get a sack fumble, 
Real easy play. I probably could have had a touchdown, but I'm not in the mood. So let's watch the replay. Whenever it gives us that option. So like I said right here, I mean, this is pretty much the setup. You can see this guy comes in free. The offensive lineman actually kind of glitches out and just like freezes. <laughs> Which is kind of weird. If you see the left of 71 right there, he's not really in a blocking animation. He just kind of knows he's got two against one and just kind of glitches out. Uh, but it is what it is. So, I mean, like I said, then I'm accidentally holding up the lineman. I don't want to be there that long. I want to drop out, but I get grabbed. And sometimes it's hard to get off. <laughs> But, uh, but like I said, you can see where the pressure's coming. I didn't mean to have that many. It's supposed to be a five-guy blitz, but uh, I get stuck and it is what it is. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.